Young People Who Rock. It's our weekly series where we feature a different young person or people under 30 doing amazing things. Our young person who rocks this week is 24-year-old Marvelyn Brown, an HIV and AIDS activist and educator and also the author of The Naked Truth, Young, Beautiful, and HIV Positive. And Marvelyn, HIV in your book is in parentheses. And we'll get to that in a second because you want to keep it positive. But let's just get the elephant out of the room here. How did you get HIV? I contracted HIV through a former boyfriend who I trusted and loved. It came one night, he told me he didn't have a condom, and at the time, um, the worst thing I thought that could happen from that was pregnancy. But that wasn't the worst thing. Oh, no, absolutely not. <laughs> How did you find out? You were 19 years old at the time. Mm -hmm. You were a track star. You were athletic. What, did, what was your first reaction when you found out it was HIV? I was shocked, and I wasn't shocked because I contracted, you know, HIV, which I consider to be this deadly illness, and um, there was no cure for I was shocked that I contracted a virus that I felt I was immune from. And your parents also probably had the same type of reaction. They didn't know what to do with the surfaces in their home, uh, decontaminating everything. I mean, they kind of went overboard in, in reacting and dealing with you and HIV. Right. No one um, in my family knew about HIV. No one gave me any extra information because it wasn't something that we had seen every day. I didn't know anyone personally living with HIV and they just didn't know how to treat the situation. Okay, Marvlin, uh, we put your story on our website. We got a lot of comments, a lot of questions, and I want to read one to you from John who says this. How long did it take for you to see the positive side of things after realizing you were positive? So how long was it from when the time you were diagnosed until now, six years later? Yeah, um, it was four months into my diagnosis because when I was newly diagnosed, uh, just experiencing that at home, and I even had a situation in church where I felt like this was a punishment from God and this was something that I deserve. You and were I, sleeping in your car. Yeah, 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 yeah. You were eating off paper plates. I was homeless, and so, yes, every day I wanted to die. I thought about death, and I had really just given up on myself and life until I had a near um, deaf car experience and it really and truly it had woke nothing me up. to do with HIV nothing to do with these pills yeah. you were about to you, show me these pills that you take yeah this is just one dose yeah that's one dose uh, I take every night before I go to sleep uh, they're my best friend that's just it but if I get a cold or I'm just not feeling good then I gotta you know add to it you know the Tylenol and different things like that so I mean that's just the minimum okay it's definitely grown more. Right, and they, they have nasty side effects. I mean, everybody yeah. should know this isn't glamorous here. Oh, no, not at all. Marvelin's glamorous? That's not. I see. Trust me. Okay, well, after 30 <laughs> years, I'm curious that the disease really gained a lot of awareness. Do you think people's perceptions have changed? Do you think the stereotype still exists? See, the thing about HIV is I think people are aware of it. They heard of it. They know of it. They're just not educated about it. And I had a, the opportunity to look at some of the comments that you know, uh, people were making, and just by looking at the comments, you could see and you could tell people had a misconception of HIV as a whole. And, and what is that? What's uh, a misconception? What the, it's a certain group of people. I know tomorrow is Black AIDS Day, which which is perfectly fine because it does affect the Black community. But this is a human disease, one that affects us all. And when I tell you, I was shocked because I contracted a virus that I thought I was immune from, I automatically put it on gay men, IV drug users, prostitutes. I never thought someone like myself, whoever that was, could contract HIV. And um, when I go and I speak, that's the main thing that I hear. And you know, people are constantly telling me I make HIV real to them. Okay, and here's, it speaks to Nikki's question right now from your point of view. What do you think is the most effective way to teach young women about HIV and AIDS? Because it seems like they relate to you. They get yeah. you. You're their peer. Yeah, um, that's the thing. It should just simply be open and honest with them. Um, I, I found that more effective, just me telling my story and not holding back. I mean, you know, especially with my autobiography, The Naked Truth, I, I, ju I just opened up and I was so vulnerable. And people could relate to that.
people can relate to your story because you're young, but what about your mistake? I mean, what if somebody says to you, and I'm sure you've heard this all the time, that you made a mistake, you had unprotected sex, so you probably uh, shouldn't get any recognition for that. Well, I don't call it a mistake. Um, I actually call it a choice. It was a choice that I had, and it's one I make, and it's one that I look at people's parents made. We're sexual beings. That is how we got here through sex. I completely take responsibility, you know, for the actions I played. I'm not asking for the recognition. I want people to recognize HIV, the virus, the one that's affecting us all. Okay, so that sexual being brings us to Teresa's question. <laughs> Is it hard for you to date these days? And I know you get this question a lot. Uh, when you tell a guy you're HIV positive, what's his response? I mean, I've definitely had the mixed reactions from the guys. Uh, dating really hasn't changed. I've, I never stopped dating, so I've continued to date throughout these five and a half years that I have been positive and um, some guys choose to stay and some choose to leave but I'm happy that I am HIV positive and I know it sounds so strange because it does it, so it, it sounds has, like it sounds weird right uh, but HIV has taught me so much it's been a self teacher for myself it's taught me to love and accept myself for who I am and um, also when it comes to guys and I tell them I'm HIV positive, um, if they choose to stay, that means they were looking for something more from me. And I look at it if they wanted to leave, that, you know, they just wanted sex or something Do you like have that. sex with them? I, I, not all of them, girl, not all of them, but yes. Just I, I have to I, ask. I, yeah, so yeah. Do you have sex, do you have protected sex or unprotected sex? Oh no, I I'm definitely have protected sex these days. Absolutely, like, like I said, that choice, those right there, those pills remind me every day of that choice that I make. And the reason why I share that my story is so that people, you know, will make healthier and wiser decisions that I did not make. I'm looking, I'm telling people don't be like me. You know, you can be like, you know, the marvelous part of me. But as far as the vulnerable girl I was at 19 years old, I really want people uh, to, to think of her. And learn from you. And I yeah. think that they definitely have Marvelyn Brown, the author of The Naked Truth. Young, you are beautiful. You are. I and am. HIV positive. <laughs> you are positive. And thanks so much for sharing your story, Marvelyn. Thank You're you. Welcome. You can read more about Marvelyn by heading over to CNN.com slash young people who rock. If you know other young people doing amazing things out there, you can nominate them at this website as well.